Today is your lucky day and I'm here to tell you why. I have five dinners that you can make for your family for $35 or less. So you've got dinners planned for the whole week. Bonus, I've also got all of the ingredients mapped out along with the recipes in a handy dandy printable down below. So stay tuned, you are not gonna wanna miss this video. Before we get into the video, I wanna take a moment and thank Helix for sponsoring. You guys, Adam and I have needed a new mattress for a long time. We have had the same mattress for I wanna say almost 10 years and even when we got it, it was a hand-me-down. So it was long past due time for us to get a new mattress. Thank goodness, Helix to the rescue. If you guys aren't familiar with Helix Sleep, they make premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently they are shipped right to your door, which for me is the best part. Everybody's different and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and your sleep preferences to get the perfect mattress for you. And if you sleep with a partner, you can take the sleep quiz together and find something that's the perfect compromise for both of you. I personally toss and turn at night, although I do like to sleep on my side and my stomach as well. Adam prefers kind of a softer mattress. I prefer a firmer mattress. And so we were able to take the sleep quiz and we ended up with the Helix Plus, which is perfect for us. I can actually sleep on my side now and feel like my whole body is supported. We have had this mattress for almost a month now and we both love it. It is such an upgrade <laughs> from our old mattress. We also got the Glacio Tex cooling cover and and it's a great way to keep cool in bed, especially if you are a hot sleeper. So definitely recommend that. What I like most about our Helix mattress is it is so much more comfortable compared to my old mattress. And it's also super easy to get delivered and put together. Adam and I put it together in like a few hours one afternoon on a Sunday and it was seriously so easy. Even Adam was super impressed that it didn't require any tools to put together. But I think that's the best part is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door and you can get free shipping in the US. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up yourself. And if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, Helix actually has a 100 night sleep trial. So you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they'll actually pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. Plus, Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. We love our Helix and I think you guys would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, definitely check out Helix. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash Jen Chapin and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. How awesome is that? Once again, the link is helixsleep.com slash Jen Chapin. I will have that link in the description box below, so definitely check that out. You won't regret it. Highly, highly recommend this mattress. Also, Milo approves and recommends it as well. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you all of the delicious dishes we are making in today's video. I love doing my sort of spin or take on extreme budget videos because I feel like these are attainable meals that even though you are cooking on somewhat of a low budget, they're delicious. Like I would serve these to anyone if they came over to my house any day of the week. So what we are making is we are first going to make a vegetable chickpea curry and rice. This is such a filling and delicious dish. We are also making some bean burritos with a really great Spanish rice. One of my favorites is potato soup and I'm gonna share it with you how to make a delicious focaccia bread to go with it. Another great recipe, breakfast quesadillas with the best home fries you will ever taste. This is really family friendly, my kids love it. And last but not least, we are making shepherd's pie with deviled eggs. So we've got a ton of hearty meals that you can cook for your family all under $35. I'm gonna share a shopping list with you along with all of the recipes. All of the recipes that I'm making today actually are coming out of my cookbook, The Essential Pantry Cookbook. I'll have this linked down below as well, but come along with me as we shop for $35 and make all of these delicious meals. Okay, so here is everything that I picked up at Walmart to make five meals this week for my family of four 
for just $35. So I did go ahead and get a bag of russet potatoes. We're actually gonna use these for one, two, three, four of the recipes. So we'll go ahead and make this five pound bag of potatoes stretch. It's a great deal at $2.78. I got two limes for a couple of the recipes. These were just 25 cents each. I got a bunch of cilantro. This is gonna add some good flavor. This was 88 cents. I got a dozen eggs. We're gonna use this for several of the recipes and a dozen eggs at Walmart, or at least at my Walmart, is $3.51. I got a pound of ground beef. We're gonna use this for the shepherd's pie. This is kind of a splurge, uh, especially for an extreme budget meal. It's $4.78, but we are going to stretch this with some potatoes and then we're gonna make some deviled eggs with it as well, so it should be good. I got some bacon pieces. Uh, this is actually a great substitute for a package of bacon if you want to just add bacon flavor to things. At my Walmart, these are $1.70, which is a great deal. I got a container of sour cream. We're gonna use this for several different recipes and we're gonna use it for our breakfast quesadillas as well, $1.96. I got a two pound bag of baby carrots. What's interesting about carrots is that the one pound bag of whole carrots and the one pound bag of baby carrots are the same price. So why not get the baby carrots and have all the work <laughs> done for you? This two pound bag is $1.92. I got some coconut milk. We're gonna use this for the vegetable chickpea curry. This is the cheapest brand at my Walmart. It is $2.12 a can. I got a can of chickpeas. We're gonna use that for the curry as well. Those are 78 cents. And then for the bean burritos, I got three cans of pinto beans. Um, these are 78 cents a piece. Now, obviously, if you wanted to save way more money, you could cook your beans yourself. However, it does take additional time and I wanted to show how you could do it without cooking your own beans. I got some tomato paste. We're gonna use this for some good flavor for the shepherd's pie, 76 cents. I also got a small can of tomato sauce. We are going to use this for the Spanish rice that we're going to make. That was only 44 cents. Two yellow onions are gonna add a lot of flavor to most of our dishes, $1.96 for two. I got a head of garlic also, 62 cents. That has a lot of flavor. And then I think this is a great value at, great value <laughs> at Walmart. This is an eight pack of burrito sized tortillas. We're actually gonna use this for two different meals, $1.98. I got a two pound bag of white rice, $1.54. Great deal there. We're gonna use that for some rice to go with the curry and some rice to make our Spanish rice. I also got some peas. These are going to be used in the shepherd's pie along with the curry. And then lastly, I got a one pound block of sharp cheddar cheese. This is $3.98 at Walmart. We're gonna use this for several different recipes for a total of $35.43. Okay, so we are gonna make potato soup. Potato soup is a great budget recipe because most of the ingredients are pretty inexpensive. I remember my parents making potato soup as a kid as sort of like a budget-friendly meal out of necessity, and we would actually add dumplings to ours to make it even more filling. Bonus, this is also gonna serve more than four people, so you will definitely have leftovers. Okay, so we're gonna use salt and pepper and butter as some of our pantry staples. I've got some carrots here. Here, we're gonna use some of those. I'm gonna use a little bit of sour cream um, just to kind of thicken up the soup after it's done cooking. Some milk, hopefully most people have this on hand. We're gonna use some of the bacon as a topper when the soup is done. And then you'll need four cups of either vegetable broth or chicken broth. I always keep this bouillon on hand in my cupboard. I also keep uh, beef because I think that it's way more budget friendly and I think that honestly it tastes better than the stuff in the can anyway. Plus you can make a lot of it with just a smaller container cheese. We're going to put that on the top when it's done. You'll need about four medium-sized potatoes. I'm using one larger one, three smaller ones, and a medium one, two cloves of garlic, and one onion. I'm going to use a Dutch oven to make this. You definitely want to use a large pot, and if you don't have any butter on hand and you just have oil, use that. It's going to be fine. Butter will obviously give it a little bit of a richer flavor, but I'm going to let that melt over medium heat while I chop up some carrots and onions.
Okay, so I've got my onion, carrots, and I went ahead and minced my garlic and put it in there. Um, I'm just gonna saute this over medium heat for probably about 10 minutes while I peel my potatoes. I would also say that even if you're not a huge fan of onion, definitely still include it in this recipe. You won't even notice it in the final dish uh, because we're gonna cook it and you'll still get the flavor in there. So our onions are softened. I have peeled and chopped my potatoes, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those. I like to chop them fairly small because I wanna make sure that obviously when you're eating the soup that you can get them on the spoon. Okay, so I stirred that up. I'm gonna go ahead and add my broth. And then that's it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this. We'll simmer it for about 15 minutes until the potatoes are tender. So we're actually gonna use this block of cheese for several different uh, recipes throughout this week. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shred it up all at once. And then I can have it in the refrigerator and it will be good to go. If you can, put a piece of wax paper down um, before you shred your cheese. It works really well to be able to transfer it into a container when you're done shredding it. And I really like this box grater that I have because it has these larger holes for grating cheese. But obviously use any size you want. A lot of times too, I will also use my food processor to make it super easy. To go with that, I wanted to make some focaccia. And this is a super easy recipe that I almost guarantee you, you have all of the ingredients for already in your pantry. So the first thing for the focaccia is to get the yeast activated. I've got a measuring cup with three fourths of a cup of warm water in there. I'm gonna add two and one fourth teaspoons of active dry yeast. I usually keep this in my fridge to keep it fresh and the best way that I can describe to measure the temperature of the water without getting a thermometer out is you want it sort of at skin temperature or like when you put your hand under the faucet, it's just warm, it's not hot, you could leave your hand there for a while. Uh, sort of like how you know you would run a bath for your kids, like warm but not hot. I'm gonna let this yeast sit in the warm water for about five minutes to activate. I've got a food processor here that I'm gonna mix up the focaccia in. If you don't have one or you really don't wanna get it out and dirty it, that's totally fine. You can just make it in a bowl, but it does make it really easy and convenient. So I'm adding two cups of flour to my food processor. Then I'm gonna add one teaspoon of kosher salt, and I'm just gonna pulse that to combine the flour and the salt briefly. I'm gonna turn the food processor on and stream in three tablespoons of olive oil. You could use any type of oil that you have on hand, vegetable oil, avocado oil, it all works. So I've got our yeast mixture with the warm water and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna leave this running while I stream in the mixture. Okay, so I let the food processor run for just about 45 seconds to a minute more. And basically you just want your dough to combine into a ball like this. Now, if you aren't using a food processor, just stir it up until it forms a ball and then knead it with your hands. It's gonna do the same thing. Okay, so I've got a bowl here. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there. And this is the bowl that we're gonna let the dough rise in. So I'm just using the dough ball to grease the bowl and then I'm gonna turn it over so the top is greased. We're gonna cover this with a tea towel and let this rise until it's doubled for about one hour. Depending on how warm your room is, it may be shorter or longer. My oven actually has a proofing function, so I just turn that on. I cover this, stick it in there, and it'll be done rising in about an hour. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish up this potato soup. So my potatoes are totally tender. I took one out and tested it just to make sure. I turned this down to low because we're gonna mix in some milk. I'm using my same measuring cup here. You don't need a new one. Um, I've got three cups of milk in there. I'm gonna sprinkle in, it's a little, I, I, usually a fourth of a cup of flour. I'm using a little bit more than a fourth of a cup of flour. But I'm gonna whisk this together and make sure that it's totally combined. And then this part is optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and add probably about, I don't know, two thirds of a cup 
of sour cream to the milk. I don't always do this, but if you have sour cream on hand, it does make it a little bit richer and creamier. Another tip I have is that if you make your potato soup and you find that it's not thick enough for you, add some potato flakes. And what I mean by that is like the instant mashed potato buds. I normally keep a box of those in my pantry for emergency side, <laughs> side dishes. So I've got my milk, flour, sour cream mixture. I'm gonna add this to my soup. And because we used the Knorr chicken bouillon, um, that in and of itself has a bit of salt in it. So you're gonna wanna taste this before you add salt and pepper. I'm gonna put the heat back up to medium and just let it come to a bubble. So I'll show you guys the focaccia dough. You can see here that it has risen nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch it down. And then I'm gonna cook this in a pie plate. You could use like an eight by eight dish if you wanted. I like cooking it in a pie plate because then you can cut it into wedges. I think it looks pretty. So I'm gonna oil that. Now, how you wanna do this is you wanna make some dimples in the top of the bread because we're gonna drizzle a little bit more olive oil over this and sprinkle it with some seasonings. Okay, so we're gonna drizzle with just a little bit of olive oil. Sprinkle it with some salt. And then I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of Italian seasoning on top. I have my oven set to 425 degrees, so I'm gonna pop this in there. And we'll bake it, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes until it is finished. So this took about five minutes to thicken up. You just want to keep an eye on it because once it comes back up to a simmer, you want to turn it down and make sure you stir it often because now that you have milk in there, it can have a tendency to kind of scald on the bottom. I'm just going to take a taste of the broth and see if we need more salt. So I actually don't think it needs more salt, but I am going to add some black pepper because we haven't added any of that yet. Probably about it's probably half a teaspoon okay so this consistency is totally fine for me because we like to add crackers to ours but if you want it thicker like i said go ahead and add some potato flakes okay so here's the focaccia i've let it cool and i mean it's still warm but i've let it cool a little bit so i'm gonna go ahead and cut this into wedges normally i like to cut it into about six wedges and oh is that like garlic bread yeah Oh, okay. And you can see like how fluffy and tender it is inside. I always tell people if you're not sure about cooking or baking with yeast, start with this specific recipe because it's super easy and it's very fail proof. So we're gonna serve up some of this potato soup. I have these very nifty uh, soup and sandwich <laughs> plates. I can link them down below if you're interested. I'm gonna put a slice of the focaccia on there and we'll add some potato soup. Like I said, this makes a lot more than four servings. So you're gonna have leftovers and that is uh, perfect because it actually tastes really good as leftovers and it warms up really well. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of cheddar cheese to the top as much as you want. I had a green onion in the fridge, so I'm gonna use that, but it's obviously not necessary. Here's a tip though, if you have green onions, you can actually regrow them in a glass of water and then you can just have unlimited <laughs> green onions. That's what I do. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some bacon bits over there. Boom. Honestly, like who can even tell this was an extreme budget meal. I would be proud to serve this to anyone that came to my house. Bon appetit. So the next meal that I'm gonna share with you guys is a shepherd's pie. And the reason why we're kind of able to fit this into this particular extreme budget menu is because we're sharing a lot of these ingredients with the other recipes. Ground beef is a little bit pricey, but we're able to make it work. So I've got three potatoes that I diced up here. I just have those sitting in cold water. We're gonna mash those, um, obviously boil and mash them for the top of the shepherd's pie. I've got salt and pepper one pound of ground chuck, some of our frozen peas, one small chopped onion, some sliced baby carrots. I've got some of our shredded cheese here. Uh, we're gonna season it with a little bit of Italian seasoning, some tomato paste. I've got one egg. We're gonna use the yolk of this 
for the mashed potatoes. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of sour cream to the potatoes and some Worcestershire sauce to flavor the beef. To go with the shepherd's pie, we're also gonna make some deviled eggs. So I've got four of the eggs in here. I just brought this to a boil and I'm gonna leave the lid on and let those sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll soak them in cold water. So to my pan here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of avocado oil and to make this recipe the easiest that you can, you want to use a pan that you can transfer to the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my carrots and my onions before I put the beef in. And we can also go ahead and get the potatoes started boiling. So I'm gonna start those. I'll probably salt the water a little bit. And I'll probably add just a little bit more water to make sure that we have enough to boil them. After my carrots and onions cooked a little bit, I went ahead and added my beef. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this and we'll cook this until it's cooked through. All right, so our beef is done. I'm not gonna drain it because there's a very minimal amount of grease in there. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of tomato paste. You just kinda wanna stir this around to coat the beef and get uh, some of the raw taste out of that. Quarter cup of flour, just a little sprinkle. This is a really versatile recipe. If you have any veggies in your freezer or your fridge that you want to use up, definitely throw them in here. Corn, zucchini, uh, green beans, really whatever you want. And then, I forgot to mention this, but I've got one and a half cups of beef broth. I don't know that I'm going to use it all. Let's see. This is the beef broth. I'm using the same Nor bouillon. And then I'm going to add some Worcestershire. Maybe a tablespoon. And I'm going to add my peas. Okay, and I'm just going to simmer this until everything is combined and it comes together. I will obviously taste it. Um, for seasoning and see if it needs any salt or pepper. All right, so I added a little bit more salt to this, a little bit more pepper. Now this part is done. So we're gonna go ahead, turn the heat off and set this aside. I do have my oven preheated to 400. All right, so for the potatoes, I went ahead and drained these. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of butter. This will obviously depend on how many potatoes you have. Some salt, some pepper. I'm just gonna add a little bit of sour cream to these. You could also use milk, but we've got extra from our ingredients. And you don't wanna make these mashed potatoes super runny. You want them to be more stiff so that they um, will kind of bake up like that on the top of the pie. So I've got an egg yolk in here. What I'm gonna do is temper this. So cold egg yolk, warm mashed potatoes. So we're going to beat this up in here to make sure that we don't scramble the egg. Add the egg and potato mixture back to your potatoes. This is uh, optional, but it will help the potatoes brown up a little bit on top of your um, pie. So those are done. Now, if you wanted to take a shortcut and you're not using this exact meal plan. Um, you could definitely use prepared potatoes, instant potatoes. It all works. No one's going to bust into your kitchen and arrest you for using prepared mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay, so I like to put about, I don't know, maybe a cup of cheddar cheese sprinkled on top of the meat mixture, and then I'll put the potatoes on top of that. So I'm just going to kind of mound these in the middle. This is sort of like uh, a, a more upscale version of tater tot casserole, right? <laughs> you probably even make this into a tater tot casserole if you wanted. So what I like to do is I like to spread the potatoes, but not all the way to the edges, because I like it when you can kind of see what's underneath there. This is ready to go in the oven. I've got my oven preheated to 400, and obviously I used an oven safe skillet, so this can go right in there. Okay, so my eggs are done. I'm gonna go ahead, I obviously peeled them and they're cool now. I'm gonna cut them in half and then I'll add the yolks to a bowl. Sometimes I'll use my, you know, like proper deviled egg holder 
to hold these, but since I'm not making a ton of them, I'm just gonna use a regular dish and I'm just using one that is a little bit smaller so they're all they will all fit in there. Obviously I like to make these ahead of time so they can chill for a little bit. Out of fork I'm just gonna go ahead and mash these yolks up a little bit. And then I just keep mine super simple. I'm gonna add in some mayo, a little bit of mustard because mustard's quite strong. You can add sweet or dill relish. I like to add dill relish to mine. And then I just add salt and pepper. Um, I'll taste it before I put this filling in the eggs, but sometimes I add just a pinch of sugar too. And then sometimes like when I make a bigger batch, I'll use a, um, you know, a Ziploc bag to kind of pipe the filling in. But since I'm just making enough for four servings, we're just gonna keep this simple and do it with a spoon. I'm not being very neat either, so <laughs> I'm going to lose points for that. Okay, so here is our completed shepherd's pie. I will give you the fact that it's not probably as beautiful as it could be. Um, some of the tomato kind of like seeps into the potatoes, and you know what? It's fine. There's cheese under there. It's delicious. One thing I would say about this is that you definitely want to let it sit for like 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven otherwise it is very um like soupy and runny it will run all over your plate so here is our shepherd's pie meal that we are having once again you're not going to win a beauty contest for this meal okay but <laughs> it's really good and hearty and it's going to fill you up because it's got a ton of protein in it with the ground beef you've got the potatoes and then the deviled eggs on the side i would have this any night of the week, especially now that the weather is getting cooler. It's a delicious dish and leftovers are really great too. All right, so the next budget meal we are making is bean burritos with some Spanish rice. So for this, I've got some pinto beans, some garlic, some lime juice that gives really good flavor to the beans. So I'm just gonna take the cans of pinto beans and drain them over a bowl. You definitely want to save the liquid because we're gonna use that to thin out the refried beans. I would actually recommend using three cans uh, of beans instead of two if you're making four servings. So I will adjust the recipe to reflect that. What I'm doing now is just sauteing some minced garlic in my pot. Uh, make sure that that doesn't burn. You just want it to flavor the oil and then go ahead and add your pinto beans and probably about a half a cup of the liquid. And then all you have to do is mash these up along with your seasonings. I added lime juice, some salt and some cumin. Um, you could add hot sauce to this, green chilies, basically anything you'd like to flavor them. And it will take a while for these to kind of you know, cook um, and mash up, but just mash with a potato masher and soon you will have delicious homemade refried beans that taste so much fresher than what comes out of a can and they are cheaper as well. So I adjusted the seasonings on this, add a little bit of extra salt, cumin, whatever you feel is right, and then set those to the side. For the Spanish rice, I will have this recipe down below as well. I am toasting about two cups of that long grain white rice in a pot. This is going to coat the grains of rice with oil to make sure that we end up with a fluffy rice that doesn't stick together. I'm just gonna stir that around. Um, it's okay to get a little bit of color on this, but you definitely wanna make sure it doesn't burn. I'm going to add some chicken bouillon, which is one of the secret ingredients, I guess, <laughs> to this recipe. It gives great flavor. And then I'm also going to add some water as well. And then um, this is really simple. You could add a chunk of onion if you wanted to flavor it. Um, I should have actually added some of my cilantro stems but I totally forgot um, that gives it great for great flavor too I'm adding my seasonings my tomato sauce and then you want to cook this covered over pretty low heat um, for about 30 minutes it definitely depends on the heat on your stove just keep an eye on it and make sure that the liquid doesn't evaporate too quickly you definitely want to give the rice a chance to cook and fluff up 
um, and you know not run out of liquid. Once it's done, leave it to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's gonna complete the cooking. And here is that perfect Spanish rice, nice and fluffy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and assemble our burritos. So I'm gonna take four of these large flour tortillas from Walmart. I really like these. I'm gonna add some beans to that. I'm also adding some of the Spanish rice to this. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of our shredded cheddar. This is definitely a filling meal and it's great for picky eaters because it's just basically beans, rice, and cheese. I'm going to roll this burrito up and what I like to do is toast my burritos in a dry skillet just to kind of um, get some texture on the outside of the tortilla and then it also helps keep the burrito together. So I just basically put it in a skillet with medium heat and let it brown on the outside. And this is what it looks like. Totally delicious. We've got our bean and rice burrito with cheese with some extra rice on the side. I garnished it with cilantro. This was so, so good. You could definitely serve it with some of the sour cream and salsa. Look away if you don't eat carbs. <laughs> Okay, next up we are making a vegetable chickpea curry and rice. So we'll need some chickpeas, some potatoes, peanut butter. I know it sounds super weird, but it adds a good flavor to the sauce. Also a can of coconut milk. And then I've got quite a few spices here. So turmeric, salt, Spanish paprika, some cumin, and some garam masala. I've also got a little bit of brown sugar and then some soy sauce as well. Um, just a tip with the cookbook that I wrote, um, it has a pantry list of ingredients that I recommend. So if you have that cookbook, you will definitely be able to find all of these spices in there. And if you're looking to build a pantry, it's a great resource as well. So I'm going to start by sauteing my carrots and onions in a skillet with a little bit of olive oil. And then I am going to mince up some garlic. I'm just sauteing these over medium heat. Make sure that they don't burn, um, getting them a little bit soft. And then I'm also going to toast my spices. So I added that to the skillet and I'll just heat that up for a couple of minutes just to kind of bring out the flavor um, in those spices. Obviously they've been sitting in the cupboard and this is a great way to sort of bloom them. Then I'm gonna add my uh, coconut milk. Don't worry if this looks a little bit chunky, that's fine, it's cold. <laughs> I'm going to add a splash of water and just cook that over medium heat. If you are a curry lover, you will definitely love this recipe. I also did not show this, but I cubed up my potatoes into small cubes and boiled them for about 15 minutes until they were soft. And I will be adding those to the curry as well. I love cooked potatoes in my curry. Obviously you could add any vegetable to this. I think peppers would be good. You could add broccoli, cauliflower whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and add my soy sauce and my brown sugar. I know this kind of seems like an odd combination of ingredients, but just trust me, it gives it a really, really good flavor. I've also made this recipe before with chicken and it turns out really good too. I'm gonna add some lime juice for a little bit of brightness. Don't forget to add your potatoes in there as well. Um, and you basically, you just want to kind of simmer this so that the flavors meld together. Um, you can add your chickpeas at the end. Obviously, those are already cooked. The peas just kind of need to defrost and go ahead and taste the seasonings once you have everything in there and it's simmered for a little bit. Um, cooking is all about making it to your preference. So if you want things spicier or saltier or not quite as salty or more of a certain spice, definitely feel free to add that. So here's how it looks when it's completed. You can see that it's thickened up quite a bit. The potatoes also soak up that delicious curry sauce. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make some rice in my Instant Pot to go along with this. So I'm adding the remainder of my bag of rice to my Instant Pot along with some water and some butter. And I'm just gonna cook that on the rice setting. Uh, did you know your Instant Pot has a rice setting? Yes, it does. <laughs> and it works great. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook. Um, this is my favorite way to cook rice. I don't have a rice cooker. You can also cook rice in the oven. I have several, um, or actually one recipe in my cookbook for baked brown rice, which makes it super easy as well. Um, if you're doing low carb, you could also serve this with uh, riced cauliflower. 
or you could also just serve it in a bowl with some naan. It would be great that way as well. Once the rice is done cooking, I went ahead and fluffed that up and we're gonna go ahead and serve uh, a big bowl of this alongside of that curry. So you can see I put a bed of rice on the bottom with our vegetable curry on top, garnished with some cilantro. Definitely a delicious recipe that is budget friendly. So for this budget meal, we are making breakfast quesadillas and the best fried potatoes or home fries that you have ever had. So what I've got here is seven eggs. Uh, we're going to beat those up with a little bit of the sour cream. That's what's gonna be the filling for our breakfast quesadillas along with some bacon bits. I've got salt and pepper, and then I like to season my fried potatoes with like some type of seasoning blend. So I'm gonna use this Alpine Touch, but you can use whatever you have. I've got some butter, some cheese for the quesadillas, and then these are potatoes that have been cooked. So what I did with these four potatoes, and I chose four that were about the same size, is I scrubbed them, I left the skins on, I put them in a pot and covered them with water. I put them on the stove, brought them to a boil, and then I cooked them until they were tender. So about 20 to 30 minutes, it really depends on the size of your potatoes. But now that they're mostly cooked, they're gonna fry and crisp up beautifully in the pan. And this is gonna be a really delicious, low cost meal that is really different than your standard you know, breakfast burrito. Okay, so for these potatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of peel them with a paring knife. You could use a peeler if you wanted to, but I find once they're cooked, the peels just slide right off with a paring knife. So you do you, use what's easiest for you in your kitchen, but I find this works really well. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut these up into kind of medium-sized cubes, and then we'll go ahead and cook them up. So I've got a nonstick skillet here. I'm just gonna melt some butter in here over medium heat, and I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil just so the butter doesn't burn. Go ahead and whisk up the eggs, break the yolks. Mm -hmm. ASMR. ASMR. Here, do you wanna put the pepper in? Yeah. Yeah, all of it? Yep, all of it. Oh, It's not like you're stirring. Uh, it's not like you're stirring soup. You're seeing how you get some of the eggs cooking already. Yeah. Just trying to keep it stirring around, and cook it evenly. Okay. Okay. That's what are you trying to do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mom, it's almost done. Yep. Yeah. You can see our potatoes are getting nice and crispy. That is obviously the benefit of cooking the potatoes beforehand. Um, and you can hold them like that in the refrigerator too. Like if you want to boil them beforehand and keep them in the fridge for a couple days before you crisp them up. If you try to cook raw potatoes in a skillet and fry them up, um, most of the time they'll burn on the outside before they are able to get crispy on the inside. Ow. Potatoes are probably one of my favorite foods. Me too. Okay, so to assemble my breakfast quesadillas, I'm just gonna use the same skillet that I cooked the potatoes in. I just removed the potatoes to a different container. And I'm going to add one of my burrito sized flour tortillas along with a handful of cheese. Um, I'm just gonna add the ingredients on one side so I can fold it over and cook it on both sides and add my eggs. Now obviously whatever you have on hand you can put into these, you know, sauteed veggies or you know, ham, dice up some ham, put that in there. We're obviously doing our budget meal, so we're going to use our ingredients that we have from our shopping. Add some bacon bits. Do a little bit more cheese on top. How does it? I'll just cook this over medium heat, you wanna make sure that you don't cook it too fast or it will burn before it has a chance to melt on the inside. Okay, we're gonna flip this over. A boom, perfect. All right, so here's how we're serving up our breakfast quesadillas. These are so good. 
Um, I've got obviously my quesadilla with the egg, cheese, and bacon in there, side of salsa. Also, we have extra sour cream from our groceries. So if you wanted some of that to dip in, you totally could. You could also mix salsa with sour cream. That would be delicious too. And we've got our fried potatoes or home fries or whatever you call it on the side. This is probably the simplest meal out of all of them, but it's really, really good. And it's a really great breakfast for dinner as well if you want something different. All right, thank you guys so much for coming along with me on today's video. Don't forget to check out Helix. We have really, really been loving our mattress. I highly recommend them. It was so easy to order it, set up all of the above. You'll be sleeping like a baby in no time. So click that link down below and check that out. Also, don't forget that I will have all of the recipes along with the shopping list linked down below as well. As always, I wanna thank you for being here. If you wanna check out some other extreme budget videos that I've done, I'll link them on the screen right here. So pick one of those to watch and I will see you in my next video. Bye.